Thanks, David. Thanks uh, to all of you for joining us at the Sold Out Green Space tonight. And uh, welcome to those of you who are watching us via Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, however you're watching. Um, how many of you have been to one of our Green Space events before? Okay, a few. How many of you have ever been to a New York Guitar Festival event before? A few more. All right. Uh, for those of you who've been to neither, this is how it works. We've got uh, a group of musicians who are going to come out here and play. Tonight, they're each going to do at least one Memphis mini tune and some of their own music, and we'll have a chance to speak with them uh, briefly as well. Tomorrow night, we are doing an even bigger event. Uh, it's a free event at the Waterfront Plaza of Brookfield Place, downtown, uh, across the street from the World Trade Center near the Winter Garden Atrium, where we've done our New Sounds live concerts every fall for almost 20 years. And uh, it'll just be Memphis mini songs, like 12, 13, 14 people in a row just pounding out the Memphis mini songs, which is great, because she is a criminally underrated figure in American musical history, a real linchpin between the evolution of acoustic Delta blues and electric Chicago blues. Most people are familiar with Memphis Mini because of one song covered by a band called Led Zeppelin, and that is When the Levee Breaks. And I don't think it'll be too much of a spoiler to say that you're probably going to hear that song tonight. <laughs> Just not right away. Uh, we're going to begin with Kaya Cater. She's a really gifted songwriter, singer, banjo player. We'll let her in the guitar festival. Um, and she's going to do a couple of songs from her most recent album, Grenades, as well as a Memphis mini tune. Please welcome Kaya Cater to the green space. I'm so glad to be the first official act of the guitar festival. <laughs> Banjo is the new guitar. Kids in blue drain the water from 
That is Kaya Cater, and uh, one of her original songs, that's Meridian Ground, which exactly. was one of my favorites from the, from the last record, from Grenades. Thank you. Uh, and with you is Andrew, Ryan? Yes, that's oh. correct. The on one the and only. On Two first base. names. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's an interesting song, you know, it, we, we've talked a little bit about this when you were last upstairs in our regular studio. Uh, you can find Kaya's sound check session with us doing that song and a couple of others uh, at newsounds.org. But the term half-breed recurs in the song. And, you know, for you as a Caribbean Canadian uh, singer, songwriter, banjo player. Insert endless hyphens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, your career has taken so many twists and turns already into Appalachian music. And at what point... Uh, did you discover Memphis Mini? Was it when you got the call to do this, or had you, were you already familiar with her? It was when I got the call to do this, John. Okay. So thank you for introducing <laughs> me to Memphis Mini. Um, no, but I, I was actually kind of... Uh, I, I find her to be an extremely Im important um, voice and presence in the lineage of blues music, and I was surprised that I hadn't heard of her, but, but I think it's, it's no accident, you know? I think uh, we're, we're familiarized with, with a lot of the men, with Big Bill Brunzi, with Howlin' Wolf, um, with Muddy Waters, um, Blood Belly even, but uh, I think some of the women often are overlooked, and especially uh, women of color, and so uh, I was really excited when I got this call because I realized that though I've done many, many tributes, I've never done a tribute to a black woman which is, I think that's a special thing. And so I, I dug into her collection and it's so incredible and prolific. Well, and you know, in, especially in the 30s and early 40s, you know, when she wrote like her best stuff, when the levee breaks, she wrote with her then husband in like 29. Right. You chose Frisco City? Frisco Town. Frisco Town. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what was it about that song that kind of spoke to you? I, I find that she, that Memphis Minnie, uh, who previously went by the name Kid Douglas, which I, I thought that was a, a, great na a great name. That was her first moniker when she first started playing out. Um, but I, I should say Memphis Minnie was not her choice. No, that, that was given that to was her, That was given right? to her yeah. by her record company, right. which is how it was done back then, especially if you were a woman and a woman of color and you had no say in the matter. Right. Isn't that crazy? Someone saying, yeah. like, this is who you are. Right. Um, Anyway, I, I find that she has an extreme command over her sexuality in, in her music, and I, and I always f found that to be, for me personally, a hard topic to broach, you know? And I, and I just appreciate that she's so playful um, in, in a lot of her songs. Not to say that her songs aren't serious, Mm -hmm. uh, but Frisco Town was particularly appealing to me because she's kind of stringing this guy along. They're like on this train together, headed to San Francisco, and she's like, sure, I'll hang out with you for a while. But then they pull into the station and she's like, no, this is done. I'm <laughs> off to figure out my destiny. And uh, yeah, and so I, I just really identified with that. All right. <laughs> okay. 
I could ask a follow-up question, but your parents might be watching, so I'll skip it. Um, but you're going you're gonna to first do another of your, your own yeah. songs, right? Yeah. Canyonland? Yeah, that's correct. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Kaya Cater. so much. If you're liking what you're hearing of this banjo guitar hybrid, um, I will be playing at Flushing Town Hall in Queens June 7th, which I believe is a Friday.
This is Frisco Train. That Frisco train runs a mile a minute. That Frisco train runs a mile a minute. Well, that old coach, I'm gonna sit right in. I'm on my way to Frisco town. Kaya Kager and Andrew Ryan. Thanks, Kaya. Great to see you. Kaya will be uh, joining us again tomorrow night at uh, the Waterfront Plaza at Brookfield Place. We'll be starting at 6.30 with a DJ set by DJ Spooky and some special guests. And then our series of live performances of songs by Memphis Mini. Again, that's a free event tomorrow evening, but really happy that you're here with us in the green space tonight. Our next guest is actually a guitarist. Um, <laughs> Rafik Badia first joined us uh, upstairs uh, on the, uh, the Soundcheck podcast series some years ago as a solo guitar player. He has since become a member of the band Sun Lux, but has continued to do his own music and is here tonight to perform on the unlikely combination of his electric guitar, and our acoustic piano with Chris Padishall. So please welcome them to the stage here at the Green Space. Thank you. So uh, Rafik, um, what is it that you and Chris have put together for us this evening? It's not like discrete songs, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, um, it's something that will snake its way through about 10 minutes and um, culminate in a piece of Memphis Minnie's music called You Ain't Done Nothing to Me, um, which is... It's this very persistent, tough, um, kind of like repetitive melody that, you know, like the lyrics are things like, you'll drive me from your door, or you can drive me from your door, you can take every penny I've got, you can cock your pistol in my face, but you ain't done nothing to me. Mm -hmm. And it's just this very, it haunts you, you know, and it's it's like, I feel like our version of it is like trying to capture the haunting of it. Okay. Uh, instrumental, right? Yes. Um, so how do you, I mean, you, you said this, this kind of musical journey will culminate in that. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you kind of take 
her kind of harmonic language as a starting point? Do we hear echoes or sort of pre-echoes of that building up to it? Well, what we're going to play in the first portion is sort of like, it's somewhat harmonically related, but it's actually a discrete piece that's loosely drawing on a body of work that Chris and I have been working on um, for a little while that we actually started to compose um, for a commission that we got from Trinity Church that was an inbuilt, engulfed cathedrals project. Uh -huh. And it was sort of about environmental awareness. And so it's like this slow shifting kind of tectonic music. Mm -hmm. And um, we're taking a similar approach with the Memphis music, M Memphis mini music. That's very alliterative. Um, <laughs> but we're, we're trying to kind of find a way to her piece, um, and it's not entirely deliberate, or I, I should say it's not entirely like set in stone how we're gonna get there. Right, um, right. But we're looking forward to it. So it, it, so it is actually a musical journey, and you'll find your way. That's right, um, right. that's right. But, you know, there's, um, there's something like that going on in a lot of, like I feel like a lot of the examples of her music that I've listened to since this whole project came about has had this sort of, um, you know, on its surface it kind of has this like stasis in it and this sort of like um, tunefulness to yeah. it, but inside of that like there are all these unexpected kind of moments where I notice things like I'm like, I wonder if the band knew that she was going to do that at the moment or like, <laughs> you know, like it's just very, it's very fluid and it has, it's all like the magnet that kind of draws it all together is her voice and her guitar playing, which I was just reading Langston Hughes described as sounding like electric welders and are like, <laughs> yeah, like it, it's just like, and weirdly like that's like, as somebody who doesn't really identify with making a guitar sound like a guitar, like having the guitar sound yeah. like electric welders is like kind of my thing, I think. <laughs> so, All right. Well, yeah. weld away. Rafik Bhatia with Chris Padishal.
Rafiq Bhatia, Chris Padishal at the piano, and the ghost of Memphis Minnie. <laughs> nice job. Well, that was super creepy. <laughs> Good night, kids. Sleep, tr pleasant dreams. Um, <laughs> can't wait to see what they do for us tomorrow um, at our event at uh, Brookfield Plaza. Um, we're in the green space tonight, uh, celebrating the music of Memphis Mini and celebrating 20 years of our collaboration between WNYC's New Sounds and the New York Guitar Festival. And our next guest is actually someone who has not been in our studios upstairs before, although uh, you've heard her performing, if you listen to, to New Sounds, as part of the quartet called, uh, the, the album's called Songs of Our Native Daughters. Please welcome one of the Native Daughters, Amethyst Kia. So here's Amethyst with a guitar, but her deep dark secret is she also plays the banjo. <laughs> right, yeah, I try not to let it out too much. <laughs> Just kidding. Although one of the interesting things about that uh, Native Daughters project is it's four women of color who are all banjo players, among yeah. other things. Yeah, yeah, all the uh, yeah all the songs the the banjo was the center because um, usually when you're dealing with like with Afrocentro music or Afrocentric themes. Um, the banjo usually is not is not usually thought of just because of you know historically, you know how the between the the division of the recording industry um, separating hillbilly from hillbilly records and race records, um, you 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 for a, there would be a, come a time when you wouldn't really find a too many black people playing banjos because they couldn't really make any money doing it because mm -hmm. you know because of how things got skewed um or if they were to make money at it it would be doing blackface so right, <laughs> like right. it's so there it wasn't really a whole lot of incentive to keep it going at that point in time but um so to kind of reclaim that instrument as um obviously it's an american instrument of course but um to reclaim those roots um i think is it's really important that that's remembered because um just because of the issue of erasing certain people from certain aspects of history and yeah, yeah. and then when I'm holding a banjo the idea that you know it's you know I'm seen as you know acting white or you know putting these different kind of categories on me when it's like do you read history like yeah this is actually like <laughs> you know like the banjo is not it's not really shouldn't really be seen as novel but it is you know but you know we're getting the word out so yeah, yeah. that's the whole idea but. i mean the instrument came from someplace and it wasn't here right <laughs> exactly um so but the idea of being erased from history is an interesting thing when we're talking about memphis mini right exactly um i know what you mentioned earlier and um you know this was a, a woman that i guess during her time wasn't nearly as recognized as she should have been. Mm -hmm. um, and you think of a person, you think of a woman during that time, especially a black woman, her options are to be a domestic worker or to, or to be uh, some, some form of laborer um, or turn to prostitution or turn to other things, which I think at some point I think she actually did have to, to she did have to, to prostitute to make ends meet. But the fact that she just decided, well, I'm just going to play music. I'm just going to play my guitar um, during such a difficult time uh, to me is just incredibly inspiring. Um, you know, I had the luxury of my parents bought me a guitar when I was 13 and then I just stayed in my room and played guitar like I you know what I mean like I had you know I had you know you know I had this I had this extra kind of little layer of, of of privilege there um that I'm when I read about people like that and um read about her story and what she had to go through and still make amazing music despite all of the things she had to face um it's just really I feel very grateful I feel like I'm standing on the shoulders of 
of uh, of some amazing people, and she's definitely one of them. So. Yeah, and and someone who's you know, I mean, the reason we're doing two events is to you know bring out the fact that this really was a pivotal figure in the development of. I mean, there's no rock and roll without the electric blues, and they, you know, she's right, exactly. she's like right there at the birth. Yeah. Um, now the the song of hers that you're going to play, "Kissing in the Dark," is this. Early acoustic, later electric. What, what 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 drove you to this particular song? Well, you know, when I was looking through the catalog, I this song really this song really kind of just resonated with me. I thought the the lyrics, um, the lyrical content was was pretty interesting because um, it kind of seemed like she was also kind of toeing the lines of like gender and sexuality within that song too. I mean, I don't know what exactly you know all the details as far as that goes in her personal life. Um, but uh, I just thought she that was she was married several times. Yeah, yeah, there's that. But as far as like the other aspect, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know if there's anything outside uh -huh. of the married thing. <laughs> but um, but I mean, I just in that song in particular, like she tends to, she seems to kind of toe the line with that. Um, and this idea of you know being, you know, being a woman once again, doing as she doing as she wants to do mm -hmm. um, and not feeling confined to domesticity and that kind of thing. So I just thought that was an interesting, um, I just thought it was an interesting song in that way. And then when I was messing around with it, I kind of came across this sort of really interesting kind of halftime beat that I ended up coming up with for mm. it that, um, that felt really, I don't know, felt really, felt really cool, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> So interesting. So it was actually the lyrical content rather than you as a guitarist admiring the virtuosity of the picking that drove you to this well, song. Well, what's interesting with me is I definitely enjoyed, I mean, her guitar playing is phenomenal. It's amazing. Um, and I think where, where I'm at now um, and the way that I have played guitar, like I've kind of developed my own style. So when I listen to her playing, I'm like, well, this is great. And how can, what can I do to honor what she's doing, but also do it in my own way? Right, right. Um, finger picking is sort of, it's like the crux of how I play guitar most of the time. So uh, her finger picking style is incredible. And I had to figure out a way, where can I mesh my style with hers? As opposed to trying to play like her, how can I mm -hmm. honor that with, the, with how I play? So, yeah. Okay. Now, you're also going to do a couple of your own songs. What do you want to do first? Well, first I'm going to do a song called Wildebeest, and then after that I'll do a uh, little bit of a country, 6-8 little country song that I wrote called The Worst. All so. right. Ladies and gentlemen, Amethyst Kia. <laughs> I 
was a banshee in the night, but now I'm the one that got away. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate that. Thanks to, I really want to thank the uh, New York Guitar Festival and thank uh, WNYC for putting together this awesome, fun little night with you all. So this is, I heard it sold out. It looks like it did. I don't see, I don't see an empty chair in here. So thank you all so much for coming. This is great. This song, The Worst, it's a love song, by the way, if you're wondering. <laughs> I always... Actually, that's the wrong key. <laughs> that's the thing about using a capo. Um, sometimes you don't move it, and you start playing a song, and then you're like, that feels weird. But, uh, yeah. And then I found it Mif 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 that Memphis Minnie used the capo too, so she can use it. I think I can too. Some people call the capo the cheater, and I'm like, I just, it's the voicing that I'm looking for, so. Nothing else can be 
so much and then uh this is of course this is the last one and i'll do kissing in the dark Call the doctor, call him quick. Don't do something about to make me sick. I've been kissing in the dark. Been kissing in the dark. Kissing in the dark, honey, that's my birthmark. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a girlfriend from Alabama. She done put her pennies all in. Been kissing in the dark, been kissing in the dark, kissing in the dark, honey, that's her birthmark. Mm -hmm. She had a date with a scrap, she met a hip cat, nobody knows where she is at, just kissing in the dark, yeah, kissing in the dark. Kissing in the dark, honey, that's her birthmark. Mm. Be a good pal, just swapping up a dime. Thinking a man, throw it after mine. Just kissing in the dark. Yeah, kissing in the dark. Kissing in the dark, honey, that's my birthmark. Mm. By that crazy old job just kissing in the dark yeah kissing in the dark 
kissing in the dark, honey, that's my birthmark. Kissing in the dark, honey, that's my birthmark. Thank y'all so much. Hopefully we'll see y'all tomorrow at Waterfront. Have a good night. Amethyst Kia with Kissing in the Dark. Nice job. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, once again, tonight, celebrating the music of Memphis Mini here in the green space. And for those of you who are actually here in the green space, there is merch available in the lobby uh, later on. Um, for those of you watching online, I'm sure there's stuff online. <laughs> um, our next and final guest is Fantastic Negrito. Earlier this year, he won a Grammy in the category of Best Contemporary Blues Album. So when he got home, he had to move his other Grammy on the shelf to make room for it. He has won that award twice in the past four years. which only gives you like the tiniest portion of what has been an incredible career in and out of music. Um, he has also joined us and played a couple of sound check sessions, which you can find on our website at newsounds.org. And I'm really glad to have him back here in the, uh, the green space with us tonight. Negrito, good to see you. Uh, great to be seen, thank you very much. So, you know, your career, you had a, a, a brief spell as an R&B singer in the 90s. Is that and what it was? <laughs> Near-death experience with a car crash, coming back, reinventing yourself as Fantastic Negrito. When you read Memphis Minnie's story of someone who went through difficult times and found a way to kind of continually reinvent herself and bring herself back to, to the world of music, does that, does that resonate with you? Yes, I think all the black people from that era uh, resonate with me because they, uh, you know, you had to be a survivor or you were going to be, be a victim. And um, we owe so much to them and to this amazing catalog of uh, black roots music, blues music, um, that we can really taste all across the world, everywhere that you go, and you see how each culture has taken this influence and turned it into something uh, amazing in their, in their own experiences and creativity, and, and it's a gift to the world, and we are uh, truly in debt. And yeah. when I call myself Fantastic Negrito, it's really not about me, but it's about the Memphis Minis, Skip James, Robert Johnsons, Charlie Pattons. It's, that's really what it is about. Yeah. And then you have the muddy waters and howling wolves right. and all that. Yeah, and it keeps them going, and it, it should keep going. And and the English, I mean, let's give it right. up to the Black Sabbath. <laughs> no, yeah, well, I mean, Zeppelin, all them. It's real though. It's real. And the 19th I remember talking with Robert Plant. We were hanging out in some little pub in England. He was just going down. The first name he said to me was like, "You know what it was like for us?" He was like, "What it was about for us?" He said, "Johnny Guitar Watson." I was like, "Really?" Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, it's amazing how all this. You know, usually great art and uh, comes from struggle, right? And it comes from uh, dark places. Well, uh, there's the story of the Beatles first coming to America, and Ringo mm. Starr mentioning, you know, Skip James oh, or, yeah, or Skip Robert James. Johnson and uh, getting <laughs> incomprehending looks, and right. it's like, don't you people know your own musicians? It's true, I mean, yeah. Um, and, and at that point, Skip James was still alive, and like, nobody actually, knew it. <laughs> yeah, the great thing about the English is that uh, they did actually reactivate or prolong yeah. the careers of people, because that's one thing that uh, Robert said to me. He's like, you know, I, I saw Skip James right down the street. <laughs> we were in uh, Stockport, and I, I was like, wow. 
Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty interesting how everything works out. And you know, it, again, not to belabor the point, it's important to clear a space for someone like Memphis Minnie yeah. in a world of Roberts and you know. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Willie, in in a world full of, of, of willies and stuff like Willie, that. Willie, Willie. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I, I was... That came out really wrong. <laughs> my, um, I learned a lot. Of what I learned uh, came from, uh, you know, my grandmother and her rural Southern Virginia roots. A lot of what I know is um, from uh, Grandma and Aunt Madeline mm -hmm. and um, Aunt Carol. Now, uh, so you're going to do a couple of Memphis mini tunes for yeah, us. Yeah, I'll do a couple. Um, and your arrangement of one of those great old Virginia folk songs. I mean, In the Pines is, it can be found throughout the eastern Yeah, I mean, In the, the Pines, yeah, Carolinas, Virginia. Yeah, I will do that. I did my own version of that. It's not the regular In the Pines, and it, it shouldn't be. No. And... Um, I think I changed the key and half the lyrics, but you should do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if people cover my songs, I hope they do the same thing. You should. But it makes gonna, it more interesting. We're actually going to start with one of your songs, with Bad yes. Guy Necessity. Bad Guy Necessity. Can you introduce your band and then hit sure. us with a tune? Uh, in my band, we have on the bass, piano, organs, and backgrounds, Professor Brian Simmons. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. And then we have on the uh, uh, guitar with the wonderful shirt, Mr. Paul Sounder. And then on the drums, we have uh, Mr. Darian Gray. And ladies and gentlemen, live in the green space, fantastic Negrito.
wanna blame Everybody needs one Everybody needs a bad guy Everybody needs a bad guy Damn, we can have a savior I hate my wife and my mistress Lord, I'm so addicted to the prescription pills Ooh, so delicious the victim and I'm so suspicious I need protection it's my second amendment everybody needs a bad guy someone to point the finger at right and blame everybody needs one everybody needs a bad guy they need somebody to save them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, 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 yeah. That song was easy to write in this uh, era, bad guy. Ooh. Because everybody seems to need one. Them, us, them, they did it. We're fucked up because of them. It seems to be a very popular sentiment, but it's from a very old playbook. So if you're an artist now, you should feel very inspired. <laughs> now we're gonna do uh, Black Widow Stinger. It's hard to find the lyrics to this one. It was uh, not printed anywhere, but um, I figured it out. And I think it, to me, it was, a, it was about STDs. It's just me. <laughs> we put our own twist on it, baby.
I think they would want us to do it different. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna do another one. And this one is called When the Levy Breaks. <laughs>
Why are you guys so loud? Sorry. <laughs> they feel they get excited. Excited. They're excited over my shirt. This one, I, uh, it's actually a cover, you know, but it's something I wrote because, um, maybe I should, I'll talk this one up. Because um, I grew up in Oakland, California. And I think a couple people know, you know about Oakland. We have a small city with a huge handprint. Um, and, you know, as a kid, I always, you know, I wanted to be like the toughest guys in the neighborhood. And those were like, you know, the hustlers, gangsters, pimps, pushers, dealers, I, the people that I looked up to. And I, thought, I always thought those were the, the hardest people, the toughest people, until the day my 14-year-old brother was, uh, was killed. And then I remember my mother, somebody, I think it was my mother, was like, make sure that I saw that the body before they cleaned it, and I got to see just everything graphically, and I just thought, I thought, wow, the, the toughest people that I've ever known really growing up were all the um, single mothers that had to bury their children because of the proliferation of gun violence. So this goes out to, thank you, in memory of my brother and my mother, a skinny little black girl from Brooklyn. Oh, black girl, black girl, don't lie to me. Tell me where did you sleep last night? Any pines, any pines where the sun don't shine? Well, I shivered the whole night through. Black girl, black girl, where will you go? To the place where the cold winds blow Any pines, any pines where the sun don't shine Will I shiver the whole night through You travel the road alone, and you raise that child all by yourself. Then the policeman shot a dog. Black girl, black girl, where will you go? The place where the cold winds blow. In the pain.
the sun don't shine. Fantastic Negrito. Live at the Green Space. He's going to be out in the lobby signing records and other merch. And Fantastic Negrito and all of the artists that you've heard tonight will be joining us for our free event tomorrow evening at the Waterfront Plaza of Brookfield Place. And if you want to hear more of Fantastic Negrito's story, check out his soundcheck sessions on our website, newsounds.org. In the meantime, to everyone who's been watching us online on Facebook and YouTube and Periscope, and to you folks here in the green space, thank you all for being with us. Good night. Yeah.